Welcome to my channel, I'm Dr. Zona. In this video, I'm going to discuss the science and wisdom behind why walking is the best exercise for the heart. According to CDC, heart disease is the leading cause of death in the United States. It's a worldwide problem. Heart disease is the leading cause of death for men, women, and people of most racial and ethnic groups in the United States. About 2 in 10 deaths from this happens in adults less than 65 years old. It was reported who dies due to heart disease are more men than women. Healthy diet and regular exercise routine are commonly known to decrease the risk of heart disease. One very important natural blood pressure medicine is deep sleep, which is sometimes not discussed much. Deep sleep resets our cardiovascular system. It decreases our blood pressure and heart rate. It helps to stabilize our system. I just did a video regarding sleep duration. Please check it out. I will put the link down below in the description as well as the references regarding this topic today. The focus on improving our diet is very popular and there's a good science behind that to improve the chemical composition of our heart in order to keep it healthy. However, we need to also improve and maintain a very good exercise routine and sleep duration. There was actually a study and hopefully one day I will try to share it here regarding how exercise can improve your overall health and so you can have a bit of freedom on what you eat. Emotional intelligence plays a very important factor as well in keeping our heart healthy. That is another topic to be discussed. Doctors would recommend walking as best exercise for prevention and management of cardiovascular disease. With open heart surgery, cardiac rehabilitation is not as popular as stroke rehab. When some body parts are paralyzed from this stroke, we can see how the muscle mass changes and the loss of function of your muscles are evident. However, the heart muscles are not visible. Possibly that is why cardiac rehab is not as popular. Without realizing that the heart muscles are actually one of the most important muscles in our body. It needs to function well and stay healthy to give power and strength to the legs in order to keep moving. The lungs and the heart plays a very important role in keeping us upright, give us endurance and speed. They are like the engine of a car. It needs to work well for the car to move. It is recommended to walk at least 30 minutes a day, 5 days a week, brisk walking, normal pace at 3.5 miles an hour to where you can still hold a conversation and not be short of breath while you are doing your walks. You can start at your own pace for less than 5 minutes and work your way up over time. Physical therapists can make conclusions as to whether you're likely to be dependent in your activities of daily living, be hospitalized, a fall rest, a household or community ambulator by measuring your walking speed, your gait, velocity, balance. We have different tests that we use to determine this. The quality of your gait or walking has a lot to say about your health. If you are concerned about this, you can see your medical professional. Physical therapists would be able to give you a detailed examination. Walking or gait speed will also determine if you are extremely fit, has lower risk of health events, better survival, as well as determining your functional and cognitive decline with relation to your age, based on how fast you can walk. Walking, gait speed, or velocity test is becoming one of the popular ways to measure vital sign, which some companies are starting to use, besides checking your blood pressure, heart rate, and oxygen level. Physical therapy evaluation may include six-minute walk tests where vital signs are monitored. It measures how far you can walk in six minutes with normal pace, practicing breathing techniques, and relax. There are many tests that we can do to determine how fit you are. It's good to see a physical therapist for this kind of detailed evaluation at least twice a year. 
most especially if you had had a heart procedure. So you can have a better idea if you are safely doing your cardio and strengthening exercises or if you are not doing enough or doing too much of it. It could decrease the chances of having another procedure. This is one way to maintain a healthy heart. Walking and exercise decreases the risk of stroke as well than the ones who doesn't exercise. We need to improve our behavior around our health. Your medical professionals are there to guide and help you, give you instructions based on their medical findings. However, it's ultimately you who will be responsible to execute and create a good, healthy lifestyle for yourself based on what you learn from them with regards to your health. We all need to be in charge of our own health and wellness. Cardiac rehabilitation is an important part of your recovery if you have a heart condition and had surgery. Ask your doctor if you can be a candidate for this. To be closely monitored by your health professional is very important when you are in this situation until you're safe to go on your own. There are phases to your recovery and for each phase, we recommend appropriate physical activities you're allowed to do. That is why it is important to keep your medical appointments. When you had open heart surgery, there's time frame provided for your healing process and guidelines to follow. Sternal precautions and such, your doctor will not allow you to drive for many weeks or at least a month. Until you are cleared by your doctor, you should not drive. Lifestyle plays a big role in our heart issue. High blood pressure, high cholesterol, smoking, diabetes, overweight, obesity, unhealthy diet, lack of exercise, excessive alcohol use, sleep loss, emotional and financial issues need to be in good balance. In some countries that doesn't have great access to vehicles, the ones that mainly walk was found to have a decreased prevalence of heart disease. Humans are designed to walk, to be in an upright posture, and to move forward. Walking is a low-impact aerobic exercise that is one of the easiest exercise if you are able to. It reduces stress, improves oxygen to the brain, improves lung volume. It has a lot of benefit. Walking also calms the mind and improves our mood. Walking meditation is one of the Buddhist practice. Community gatherings at times involves walking for a cause. When you are crying, sad, worried, or lonely, get up and walk. It will help you feel better than to stay sitting. To stay sitting, it's more likely that we tend to feel these intense emotions more and stay longer on a low energy. We are by nature a very emotional being. Tap into your heart by walking and you'll be happier. Some article says, Walking decreases the risk of depression. I used to walk when I was trying to memorize some things I need to pass school exams. And I also like standing when I'm talking like this, especially important matters. I noticed that I could deliver much better and think well in standing than in sitting. And my brain is heightened. Sitting so much can make a body lazy and may decrease its lifespan. Changing your position whenever you can is a healthy thing to do. Standing for your right is a very popular slogan. It will be weird to say sitting for your right. <laughs> Walking and standing are usually in slogans to move the community. It seems to be a simple thing to do. But when retirement comes, it's easy to find ourselves mostly relaxing and sitting. So watch out for this. St. Peregrine has been known for one of the special penance he imposed on himself was to stand whenever it was not necessary to sit. When tired, he would support himself on a choir stall. He died of fever at 85. He had a very long life considering he was born November 1, 1260 and died May 1, 1345 when there was almost no advancement in medicine during that period. It's uncommon for a human being to live such a long life. Sometimes I meet people who have lived a long life. I would ask, what's your secret? I am blessed to have married well. Just be happy. Keep life simple. I walk a lot. 
These are some of the answers I heard that makes a lot of sense to me. There is more I could talk about regarding physical activities and overall health and wellness. And I will continue on for my upcoming videos. I hope you learned valuable information from this video. Please like, share, and subscribe. I truly appreciate you for your time spent watching and supporting my channel. Stay healthy and strong. I will see you again on my next one. Thank you and have a nice day.